program and little uh, cameos and little uh, skits and stuff that we would do from time to time. And it was, uh, it was always a great kick. And we put together a few of those moments. Take a look. Please say hello to Johnny Carson. You will find out, David, after a few years, this is the only way I can talk with anybody. <laughs> I go to, I was out to dinner last night at a restaurant. I take this with me. Yeah. I go home after the show. I use this in our bedroom. Uh -huh. I do not perform well without this desk. You know, so. you know, I noticed something right off the bat. I think your desk is bigger than mine. <laughs> well, another 20 years, you will have this desk. Uh, How are things going there in California? Pretty good. The mudslides are putting out the fire. Well... <laughs> How you doing? Mike, what a surprise. Yeah. Listen. You know, you know, Jack, very yeah. often after I finish my show, I come to my office and have a camera standing by just in case somebody might call. <laughs> David, I'm going to fax you this joke, and no matter what happens back there, it left here funny. <laughs> Johnny, can I have the top ten list? Is there anybody that good? No, sir. There's nobody that good, and, and maybe one day there will be somebody that good, but right now, all of us doing these shows combined collectively are not that good. Wow. And you, you get the feeling that in, in the case of Johnny's show, people actually watched it. In the, in the case of our show, you get the feeling people are just kind of putting up with it. Uh, <laughs> you know? I, don't know? I mean, when you see the two of us together, would you rather watch my show or his uh, show? No, I'd rather watch his show, for God's uh, sakes. Uh, for more than uh, 20 years, our first guest was a uh, producer for The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Uh, please welcome Peter LaSalle, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see you. Thank you. You know, uh, when, th when this happened, and uh, you're the, the person who, who told me all about it, um, I thought about it for a couple of days about what we would do on the show, and, and the more I thought about it, uh, it, it came to me that I would love to have you on the show, and I want to tell people right now that I had to beg you, I had to plead with you to come on the show, and you said, please, I'll be a horrible guest, I'll be nervous, it will be awful, and I said, no, it won't, it will be wonderful and would make me feel so great if you would do it, and, and out of your kindness for me, you said you would be here, and uh, I, that means a great deal to me. Thank you very much. When you, when you see those videotapes, and when you see the videotapes of Johnny for the last uh, nine or ten days or whatever it's been, what, what memories come to mind? When I, when I see those uh, tapes, I think to myself, in some cases, he had been retired up to two years. He looked tremendous and he was still as funny as ever. And you wonder, why did he retire? Why, why did he retire? He always felt that, when we talked about this for many years, he always felt he shouldn't stay too long at the fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were two big stars, Bob Hope and Jack Benny, who he felt just stayed too long. Mm -hmm. And they weren't the Bob Hope of 
the olden days. Right. And he said, please tell me if I stay too long that it's time to go. And once I do retire, remind me not to go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, no. And I didn't have to do that. You no, know, see, that was, I think, surprising to most people because uh, once you got a com not comfortable, but once you accepted the idea that he was retiring, we all assumed that he would come back from time to time in various forms. And I know people tried to get him to come back, and he just Absolutely. did not. Now, did that surprise you that the cutoff was so uh, complete, total? No, it just made me realize what a classy guy he was. Mm -hmm. That was the smartest thing he could have done. Right. Because the temptation is to go back. Yeah. I mean, when you do a show like yours and you get a possibly a standing ovation every day, all of a sudden it ends, you would want to go back right. and, and recreate that. But he never did. He, he knew he wanted to be remembered as he was at the top of his game. Now, now you mentioned something that I found hard to, to believe, that you really didn't become good friends with Johnny until after the retirement. Is that true? It's true. And, and what was that friendship like and how, how was he different after the retirement? He was much more relaxed. He was much more open. He was, was much warmer. I mean, he was always a shy, uh, shy man who was not comfortable with people, really. Uh, and when I used to see him in the last 10 years, he was just outgoing and relaxed and had a wonderful time. Right. And it's, I guess, some load dropped off his shoulders. I did, he, did he ever talk about missing the show at all? Well, the one thing he missed about the show was doing the monologue. Uh, he loved the monologue. And he would pick up the papers in the morning and, and write jokes from the paper mm -hmm. for his own amusement. And then he would call me. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Uh, he would call me and read them to me over the phone. <laughs> uh, and I thought they were hysterical, and I'd laugh like crazy. They were real good Johnny Carson jokes. But he had no outlet for them. So the sec after a couple of times, I said, you know who would love these jokes? Dave, you should send them to him. And he said, no, I don't want to do that. That would push, put pressure on Dave because he'd feel he'd have to do them to be nice. Uh, then finally I convinced him that it was okay to do them and he sent some jokes right. to you and you used them on the air right. and he was delighted because he, he was delighted that you did them and he was delighted that the audience laughed at them and gave him a great pleasure. Yeah, well it was a tremendous thrill and a boost for us because we're just sitting here day in and day out and day in and day out. You get a call from Johnny Carson right. and he's got jokes for you. I, I mean, it's like, it's, it's like Christmas morning for God's sakes. <laughs> now let, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, when, when you first met Johnny and when you went to work for Johnny. Uh, what, did, did he ever get upset about the show? Was there ever any uh, anger either on the show about something that went wrong or after the show? Were there meetings or did he ever uh, well, scream or? He would really get, no, he was not a screamer, mm -hmm. but he would get angry uh, when there were technical problems. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh tec technical problems. <laughs> oh, technical problems. <laughs> technical problems. And all of a sudden the sound went out uh -huh. or, or a light went out. And afterwards downstairs at the postmortem, he would say, now what in God's name happened? How is it possible <laughs> that this mic was dead when it should have been open? And, uh, our director, Bobby Quinn, would always give him the same answer, and he didn't seem to notice it. It was the same answer every time. Somebody must have kicked out the plug. <laughs> <laughs> that was fine. And that was, uh, that was uh, enough. Uh, you're, you're doing fine. Just okay. relax. We'll, we'll be right back with Peter Lister. everybody. Here at Ardenny's, I'm not Peter and Sally, producer of The Tonight Show. 
The, uh, it was always my impression, even before I, I got to know how the things were working out there, that, that Johnny Carson was, was bigger th than NBC, uh, bigger than, than television. And you must have had a sense of that working there. I mean, you felt that way, I'm sure. Well, the nice thing about working under those conditions is the network wouldn't bother me. Right. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a luxury that isn't always there. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, see, you know, I'd just say, well, that's the way Johnny wants it, and that would be the end of the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I've been trying to think uh, if there is a, a, as big a star on television today as Johnny, and I don't think so. Uh, I, I tell you who comes close to mind, and people will probably laugh about this, but somebody who is nearly as good as Johnny is Regis Philbin. And I think Regis does a tremendous job, but the difference that you just pointed out is you can push Regis around. <laughs> True? Yeah. And, but you, you can't, you could never push Johnny around. Sure. Sure. That's right. <laughs> and it's fun to push Regis around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Will you please have dinner with him? <laughs> yeah, I'll try. <laughs> uh, did, did Johnny ever um, show his uh, tip his hand on the air? Um, did he ever uh, get angry with a guest or short-tempered with a guest or anything well, malfunction with a guest? Well, I was always waiting for the moment where Johnny might lose it mm -hmm. and actually say to somebody what he was thinking, <laughs> which, I'm sure, which I'm sure you've been tempted to do. Uh, there was a time uh, when one of the Charlie's Angels ladies was on the show. Uh -huh. Not one of the original four, one of the ones that came. Well, there, there were many I didn't realize. Oh, yes, there were replacements. <laughs> so it was one of the later ones. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be mean, but she was dumb. Dumb. <laughs> uh, well, I don't think that's mean. <laughs> uh, and she, she was babbling on and on. And I could see Johnny's eyes glaze over. <laughs> and I thought, oh, please, don't let him, <laughs> don't let him lose it now. And he, at, after she went on and on, he leaned over to her and he said, have you ever read any books? <laughs> That's when I knew he had lost it. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, the, the one thing that Johnny always joked about, seemingly from very early on, uh, was divorce. He was married and divorced. He was married four times, four times. divorced three times. Right. Is that right? And uh, when something traumatic like that happens in your personal life, did it make a difference in how he was at work? Did it make a difference in how he was on the show? Yes. Johnny, Johnny would sometimes be moody. Mm -hmm and you knew he was angry about something. Right. But we never were sure whether it was a problem at home or a problem in the office. Mm -hmm. We told ourselves it was a problem at home. <laughs> <laughs> that it had nothing to do with us. Uh, but he, yeah, he'd get a little snarky. Mm -hmm. But it, as you told me upstairs, uh, he sort of got better at it as, the, as he went through the more divorces. He, it got easier. Yes. <laughs> yes, no, the, the, the divorces got easier, but they got more expensive. <laughs> That's right. Uh, now, I talked about, uh, and, and of course, everybody loves this. Uh, in, in, he's telling his jokes. They don't work. Maybe one or two more don't, doesn't work. And then he starts to, to dance. Right. A and uh, a lot of my buddies would speculate over the years that he sometimes would deliberately drop in jokes that he knew would not work so he could, he could work that routine. Is there any truth no. to that? No. Yeah. No. You, you know there are many bad jokes to be delivered. Oh, yes, I certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> and you just do the best you can with him. And he was really good at it. Yeah, yeah. Um, he did a lot of characters on the show. Um, Art Fern. Yes. And uh, he loved Floyd R. Turbo. Right. Aunt Blabby. Right. Uh, Karnak. Right. Who am I leaving out here? Audience? <laughs> <laughs> Which, did he have a favorite one of those? Well, he loved Art Fern, yeah. I think. He loved Art Fern and he loved the tea time lady. 
Oh, there we go, right there. But I'm right about this, aren't I, Peter, that it didn't make any difference what the character was. It was, you knew it was Johnny. Yes. And, and Johnny would always let you know, no, I'm, I'm still in here. I'm not, I know I'm not fooling anybody right. with this. Right. We're in here, and you just got a big kick out of Johnny. Absolutely. The, the other thing I like is uh, uh, his lunch. He would often bring his lunch to work. Yes, he did. And that's, that's amazing. What would he have? It was in a little brown bag. Right. And he never ate in front of us. <laughs> I don't know. Perhaps didn't want to share? No. I think if you're a big celebrity, you don't want anybody to watch you eating. <laughs> well, maybe so. Have you ever eaten in front People of People have seen people? me eat, yes. <laughs> I don't care for it. <laughs> would, uh, after a show, would, would he go out to dinner with guests? No. No, absolutely not. Which is familiar to you, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It is a little bit. We'll be right back here with Peter LaSalle. I feel I'm entitled. He'd come to work mm -hmm. and we'd go meet him downstairs and we'd just talk about our lives. Right. And the, what's going on in the world. Was there a rehearsal necessarily? Yes, there would be a sketch rehearsal mm -hmm. and music rehearsal. And uh, then we would do the show, and afterwards we'd go downstairs, and I would be the negative one who would say, "Oh, that guest didn't work," yeah. or, or when you did that joke, that sure died. <laughs> you would say, <laughs> you would tell Johnny, you would and remind well, him. <laughs> well, he would say, he would say, "It's okay, it'll play better on the air." Oh, oh. that was always the, the right. final solution. And it tended to be that way, didn't it? It tended to be that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. At the time, you think it's terrible, right. and then when you watch it on yeah. television, it's and, okay. and what was his attitude if, if you did have a show that was just a complete train wreck? What was his attitude, and, and did it affect him the following day? No, absolutely not. He, he would say, hey, there's always tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Let's not even beat up, beat ourselves up. Right. Uh, tomorrow's show will be great. That's just tremendous. That's just tremendous. It's, it was a good attitude. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Peter, you must, uh, uh, I mean, this represented a, a great portion of your adult life, your, your pursuit. I mean, the pinnacle of your career was working with Johnny Carson, for God's sakes, and knowing him as a friend. I mean, uh, the loss must have been crushing for you, huh? It was terrible, yes. Uh, you know, the last week or two, he was really having trouble breathing. Yeah. So it was, it was a surprise, but not a shock to you then? You no, it was yeah. not a shock. Yeah. Uh, I remember one time we were uh, out in, in California, and we were out there for some function, and the, the entire staff was having dinner at a restaurant out there. Do you remember that? Yes. And we run it, into Johnny Carson. Right. It was, the, Tell, fir it was the first year that we, we were nominated for an Emmy for, right. the, for your show. And we would go out there, and it became an annual event. And you flew out the entire cast and crew to be there at the Emmys, and we took over the patio of a Malibu restaurant because we were about 70 or 80 people, right. and there were about 10 or 12 tables, and it was just a, you know, a big, big crowd, and somebody told me that Johnny was, happened to be in the same restaurant mm -hmm. that night, so I went over to him, and I said, God, it would be so nice if you could just say hello to Dave and meet some of the people, it would mean a lot to them if you could just say hello. And at the end of his dinner, he came over and said, said hello. And uh, I had mentioned that the, it was the staff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he came over he, and then he, he was very gracious, sat down at the table with us, and then he left. And at the end of the evening, we went to pay the tab and the maitre d' said, Mr. Carson has already taken care of it. Right. And we thought, oh my God, how generous. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unbelievable. So the next morning I called him and I said, that was so nice of you. I mean, how generous you are. I can't, it's incredible. And he started to laugh and said, you know, he laughed his old Johnny Carson way. And he said, you know, I didn't know that all those people on that patio were, were with you. I thought it was just the people at the table. The bill was about 10 grand or something. 10 grand. Well, 
I, I can't thank you enough, Peter, uh, because I really realize I'm treading on her friendship, but thank you very much for being here. And I, I'm right about one thing. We'll, we'll not see the likes of this man again, will yeah. we? No, we won't. Yeah. yeah no, absolutely. there's only one Johnny Carson. Good to see you. Take thank care you. of yourself. Peter LaSalle. We'll be right back with Doc Severinsen, everybody. It's going to be very nice. Our next guest uh, was the musical director of The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson for 25 years and now performing with Tommy Newsom and Ed Shaughnessy. Please welcome Doc Severinsen.
today. It was great to see Tommy Newsom again and uh, Ed Shaughnessy as well. Yeah, well, they were very much a part of our family, yeah. you know. And, and this song, uh, what did this mean to Johnny? This was uh, one of his favorites? Yeah, this was his very favorite song. And the last, uh, next to the last night we did The Tonight Show when Bette Midler was on. Right. Uh, she had not planned on singing this song, and Eddie Shaughnessy, who happens to know her, stopped by our dressing room and said, hey, you know, Johnny's favorite song is uh, uh, that one there. <laughs> I know the feeling. And uh, no, no, I tell you, this last week, uh, I'm, I'm just totally wasted from the I whole understand. thing. And, you know, when you were doing the show, I was upstairs watching it on television, I, and I was laughing. And I thought, wait a minute, is, this, is it okay to laugh? I mean, I feel like sometimes I, I don't want to eat anymore, or I, yeah. I don't want to laugh anymore. Yeah. But you know Johnny's laughing. You know? Oh, by all means. Never stopped. <laughs> Is he ever? Yeah. Uh, what, now, for you, having this job every day, what did that mean? Was that a, a good job? Lots musically? of money. Money. <laughs> Lots of money. <laughs> but in addition to being a great job musically, it must have been tremendous fun going into work. No, well, actually, it was all about the money. All right, fine. <laughs> no, no, no. No, actually, there was never, never a day that I drove down to that studio that I wasn't thankful. And while we were doing the show, I said, I'm the luckiest musician in the entire world. Absolutely. Good to see you again. You sound tremendous. Doc Thank Severance you. and ladies and gentlemen. My thanks also to Tommy Newsom and Ed Shaughnessy. Special thanks to uh, Peter LaSalle and of course Johnny Carson. Tomorrow, Deborah Messing and Peyton Manning. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. Nice going.